This is How to Play Heroes and Villains by Brian Wilson on piano in accompaniment style. Before I begin, as I usually like to do with a lot of these tutorial videos that I do, let's take a look at the structure of the song. This specific version of Heroes and Villains is going to be the Smile Sessions arrangement of the song. I should also note that for anybody who is wanting to learn how to play Our Prayer on piano, I actually already have a tutorial on how to do that. So if you are interested in watching that, I will leave a link in the description for that video and a title card should pop up right about now that will take you directly to it. I will, however, be covering G in this video. Starting from G, we then have the first instance of the verse, which actually plays twice. Then the song transitions into the first instance of the chorus, followed by another verse, and then what's called the a cappella verse. Now, this is not true a cappella, actually. In almost all performances of Heroes and Villains that I have studied for the purpose of learning this song, there is usually a little bit of accompaniment that goes along with the vocals. So it's not true a cappella, which is vocals only, of course. I've also heard the Beach Boys themselves refer to this section as Barbershop. However, Barbershop is the name of a specific section of Heroes and Villains from the studio recordings that is not actually this section. So to avoid confusion and keep things simple, I'm just going to call it the acapella verse with acapella in quotation marks. Following that, we have the cantina section, and then we have a couple of sections after that that I'm going to refer to by their lyrics. So we have, my children were raised, and we have, I've been in this town. Following that, we have another instance of the chorus playing. And then following that, to finish the song off, we have two sections that do not have lyrics, and I'm gonna refer to these by their studio names, which are Bridge to Indians and Prelude to Fade. So, without further ado, let's begin. Starting off with G, this is the first chord for the vocals only section. So G is partially vocals only and is partially a section that does have piano accompaniment to it. So if you wanted to uh, emulate what the vocals are doing for this very first part, this is what you're going to do. First chord is E flat, G, E flat, and you're going to play this in this kind of rhythm. Kind of like that, although faster than what I just played. Just slowing it down for you so you can see that easier. Next chord, in the right hand we have F, a flat C, and we're going to play an A flat in the bass along with it. Uh, and this is the middle C, by the way, just so you know where we are on the keyboard. So this is the other chord that we're going to play for this vocals only part. This chord is G, B flat, D, and we have a B flat in the bass. So you can maintain the shape of your hand, your right hand specifically, and just shift it up and down as needed when you're playing this part. So all together, the vocals only section should sound something like this, albeit I'm gonna play it a little bit slower than you should. three times in total, and then twice, twice, no bass note for this, so this is the how I love my girl part, okay? And then after that, you're gonna shift into playing the actual accompaniment for the second part of G. So that is going to consist of this. Okay, gonna be playing chords in both hands here. The chord in the right hand is G, B flat, D flat, and in the left hand, we're playing the same chord as before. We're just playing it with our left hand instead of our right now. So it's the E flat, G, B flat. And uh, you're gonna 
basically be counting this stuff off in terms of how many times you strike the right hand chord. So it's up to you how you wanna like count things off, uh, but I find that the simplest way for G is to count it off in terms of fours. Um, and the reason why is because the left hand chord strikes once per every four strikes of the chord in the right hand. So 16 times in total in the right hand for this section. Then we're gonna shift to the next section. Right hand, we have A flat, C, E flat. In the left hand, we have basically an inversion of that exact same chord, pretty much. Uh, it's E flat, A flat, C. Okay, and same thing, 16 times in the right hand, alternating once per every four times uh, in terms of how many times you strike with the, uh, the left hand chord. the first chord. And back to this. But we're only going to do it eight times now, because for the final eight times, we're going to shift to these chords. Right hand, you're going to play G flat, A flat, C. Left hand, you're playing the same chord as before, but you're going to add this G flat here. And this plays eight times per counting things off in the right hand. And then... This is how we're going to end it. And what we're going to be doing here is we're going to transition into the Heroes and Villains Flutterhorn theme, as it is known. Uh, so this chord in the right hand is F, A flat, D flat. We're gonna hold it down throughout. When we strike it, we're gonna strike it with this D flat in the left hand, but then we're gonna play that flutter horn theme. So it'll be D flat, A flat, D flat again, F, A flat, B, D flat, B, a flat again, G, and then A flat to finish things off. So the actual accompaniment part will sound like this in total. first chord for the verses, first off in the left hand, we're going to play the bass notes in octaves. So we have these D flats in the left hand and the right hand in the first chord is D flat, F, A flat. Also the pattern here is left, right, left, right, left, right, etc. So you're always starting with the left hand and what that's doing. Now you're going to play this chord eight times, and then you're gonna play it again eight times. So really 16 times in total. However, I recommend that you keep track of how many times you strike each chord by grouping them in eights. In other words, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eights. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eights again. So 16 times in total. And then you're gonna transition into the next chord. The next chord is this. In the left hand, we're just gonna move 
the bass notes up one full tone up to these E flats. And the right hand, we're gonna play E flat, G, B flat, and then D flat. And we're gonna play this chord eight times. So before this was 16 times, and then this we're gonna play eight times. So, so far we have this. Next chord, in the left hand, we're gonna move the bass notes down from these E flats from before down to these A flats. And the right hand, we're going to be playing E flat, G flat, A flat, C. This chord is literally in every single section of this song, with the sole exception of My Children Were Raised and Bridge to Indians but it's in every single section of the song aside from those two. So you're going to be playing this chord a lot. Uh, this is a G sharp seven over D sharp chord, specifically is what this is known as. Alrighty, so we're actually gonna play this chord 16 times again. So just like with this chord, we played this 16, we're gonna play this chord 16 again. Okay, so, so far we have this. Then we're gonna go back to the original chord. gonna play that eight times too. Then what's gonna happen is for the first verse, the whole cycle repeats. So when you get back to this chord from here to here, basically you're gonna stay on this chord and play it 24 times in total. Um, you know, so because it's eight at the end here and then the cycle starts again, which begins with this exact same chord playing basically 16 times in total. So you have 24 in total. Okay, so that's the first verse, um, but really it's gonna end a little, little interestingly. Um, let me show you what I mean. I'll play it in totality so you can hear what it sounds like in total. But the very last time, when you get to this chord the second time around, like the end of this, so we're like, we're about to get to the top of this cycle again, where we would otherwise start a third cycle. We're actually not gonna play it eight times. We're gonna play it actually kind of four and a half times because it ends on this, on, on the bass notes. Um, so you can call this five, you could call this four and a half, but uh, let me just play this in totality and you'll see how it sounds and see what I mean by this. five-ish times, four and a half, whatever you want to call this, pretty much. So that's the first verse in its totality. Um, it's two complete cycles of the verse played in succession. Uh, the second time that you're going to play the verse, you're going to play just one whole cycle of this. And then what's going to happen is you're going to get to the a cappella section of the verse, which I put in quotation marks, because it's not really true a cappella in most performances that I have heard and seen. Um, it's not f really a cappella by its true definition here either, what I'm going to show you. However, there's many different ways that you can play this particular section of the song. I'm going to show you the way that I 
have elected to play it because I think it's the most consistent way in terms of its sound to play it. But I'll also show and talk about a few other ones very, very quickly. The chords that we're gonna play in the right hand are gonna be different inversions of the same chords from before. So this first chord of the normal verses is gonna become this. So the A flat that was up here is gonna move down here. So it's gonna become and we're only going to play one of the bass notes with it in the left hand. So before we were playing this in octaves, now we're just gonna play it like this. And we're not gonna hold this down. And the reason I don't recommend holding this down is because it can sound a little bit jumbled and a little too busy sounding if you keep holding these uh, chords down while you're doing this. So I recommend just playing them once and then letting go. But uh, what you're gonna do is for this first chord, it's. That's what we're gonna be doing. So this A flat, B flat. And then this is going to become, this chord is in the right hand, we have B flat, E flat, and G. In the left hand, we have this top E flat. Let me play that one more time. So we're gonna alternate between B flat and C. Just like that. One, one, two, one, two, one. Next chord, in the right hand, we're gonna play A flat, C, E flat, and G flat. And you notice it's all the same notes as the G sharp seven over D sharp, but we've moved these top two notes down. For the bass note, we're going to play this E flat with it again, and, but we're going to go back to these two bass notes here, the A flat and the B flat. And then finally, back to the original chord here for the start of the a cappella verse. So we have in the right hand again, A flat, D flat, F, and we're playing a D with it. But then we're going to end a little bit differently. That's how we're going to end this. So, B, or sorry, excuse me, A flat, B flat, A, a flat, D flat again. But when we hit this D flat again at the very end, we're gonna go back to the original inversion of the chord from the main verses, this up here. So all together, this is what it's going to sound like. click there at the end, but you get the idea. Um, that was almost perfect. Getting back to other ways you could play the acapella verse section, some other ways that you could do it are by just pressing down on the entire chords basically for a set amount of time. In other words, uh, let's say you want to just have ambient kind of chords in the background as you're doing the acapella vocals. So you could do and then count off eight beats. And then when you get to the top, again. Okay, and that's 16 in total. Then next, you do that. That goes for eight. That's 16. 
15, and that's eight. So you could just sing the vocals while you're doing this. It's a lot easier, I will say, to do it that way, but it kind of can sound a little thin uh, depending on how many voices you have going for this section. Um, and there's other ways you could do this too. Um, you could play uh, basically the original versions of the chords uh, from the main verses and not like these, but like this as you're playing the bass notes. You could play it like that. So you could opt to do that. Uh, you could just continue to play the regular verses uh, and just play it as you're doing the acapella vocals. something like that. Uh, the sheet music even uh, has a way where it kind of emulates what the vocals are doing in the right hand by what you're playing in the right hand, I mean. So the right hand is kind of like mimicking what the vocals are doing in this section. And then it, the sheet music pretty much recommends doing that while on the left hand, alternating between the A flat and the B flat. So there's a bunch of different ways that you could play the acapella verse, and I really encourage you to experiment and see which way uh, you like best um, and is easiest for you to play, but also is going to be conducive to the, to the uh, kind of sound that you're aiming for with this. Uh, so from here, this is going to shift into the cantina section. However, before we get to the cantina section, let's go over the chorus of the song. Okay, the chorus. First chord in the right hand we have B flat, E flat, G flat, B flat. And these are gonna be broken chords, so it's gonna be just like that. And of course it syncs with what your left hand is doing. So the notes for the left hand are going to be E flat, D, and then B flat. So let me just play this in rhythm. You'll hear what it sounds like and see what it is that I'm doing. Okay, so that's the rhythm and those are the notes. So that's the first chord. Second chord. Oh, look what it is. It's our old friend, the G sharp seven over D sharp chord. Um, okay, so that's the chord in the right hand. And in the left hand, the notes are gonna shift down a little bit. We're gonna be playing A flat, G, and E flat but rhythmically it's the same kind of thing going on here. Then back to the first chord. a jump here we're gonna go from down here and up here to this basically so in the left hand we have F and the chord in the right hand is A flat C E flat F and then A flat again and the other notes for the bass notes are so E and then B flat. Now, we're only going to play this chord twice. So you notice before, we were playing them basically in cycles of four. Here, 
here, we're actually going to just play this particular chord twice before moving on to the next chord. So when we get back to this F and before we go to the B flat, obviously, we're gonna shift the chord in the right hand up a little bit. It actually becomes this chord, which is B flat, D, F, A flat, and B flat. Okay, so this is what it will sound like, this section in total. next section, it's going to go back to this chord. This is the first chord of the chorus. B flat, E flat, G flat, B flat. Uh, and the bass notes, it's going to become E flat, and then F, and then we're actually, there's one more chord after this, um, but when we get to that chord, we're gonna hit this G flat. But let me just show you real quick what this particular chord that I'm on right now is gonna sound like before getting to that final chord. And that's the last chord. This chord is A, D flat, G flat, A. Kind of a very wide chord here. So all together, this is what the chorus will sound like. the chorus. Okay, the cantina section. The cantina section is going to shift the bass notes up a little bit here. So the first chord, in the left hand we have this B flat, right hand we have D flat, G flat, B flat, and we're going to play the right hand chord three times and alternate it with this B flat in the bass, but uh, you're only gonna basically be playing this twice because of the rhythm. So you'll see what I mean here in just a moment. And then what's gonna happen is the bass note's gonna shift down to this G flat. But here's what's, here, just watch and I'm gonna explain what's happening in just a moment. So when we get to the fourth time, the bass note's gonna become the G flat, as I said here, and we're basically just going to play single notes. So the notes here are A, B flat, C. And then when we get to the C, we're gonna then go back and play this a final time. So the full chord of final time, but with this G flat in the bass. So it will sound like this. Just like that. Okay, next chord. Whoops, sorry, next chord. Here we go. Sometimes I'll make that mistake, um, but it's this chord. Right hand, we have E flat, F, and then A flat. And the left hand, we have this F. Okay, bass note, when we get to basically the fourth beat of this particular chord, it's going to shift down to this B flat down here, and the right hand notes are going to be G, A flat, and then B before going back to this. So once again, from the top, we have...
next chord. Right hand, we have D flat, E flat, and G flat. In the left hand, we're gonna play this E flat. And we're gonna play this chord three times. So again, from the top so far. Okay, so I'll show that one more time, but basically one, two, three, and then one, two, three. So this chord in the right hand becomes C, E flat, G flat, A flat. Again, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. So let me play this again and I'll explain more about the bass notes here in this part. Just like that, pretty much. So it's okay. So when we get to the third beat here, we're going to play that with this top B flat. As we are shifting chords, we're then going to play in the left hand this A. So shifting chords in the right hand, I mean, uh, um, as you probably can tell. Uh, and then when we get to that first instance of this chord, we're going to time that with this A flat. So again, from the top, so far we have for the cantina section. Next chord. Okay. Right hand we have B. D flat, F, and A flat. And then in the left hand, we're gonna play octaves for this. We're going to play D flat. And this chord, first off, it's played in unison with the left and right hands, but we're gonna play this chord four times. Okay, before I get to the next chord, let's just repeat from the top. chord we're only going to play this twice but same rhythm it's in unison this chord in the right hand is b flat d flat g flat and we're playing b flats and octaves in the left hand we're only playing this twice and then twice again but look what chord we're on it's our old pal the g sharp seven over d sharp chord Popping up again. It'll pop up throughout this song pretty much, except for in two sections, as I said before. Okay, so then it's gonna shift back to the top. Play exactly as it did the first time, except it's gonna end differently. So I kind of timed that poorly, so let me play that one more time just so I can not stop myself mid-sentence and be like, oops. Okay, so this is how it's gonna end differently. So when we get to this chord, normally when we get here, we don't like alternate. And usually what I'll do because of that is I'll move my hand into position for the next series of bass notes for the next chord. But the second time around, when we get to here, we are actually going to alternate it with this A flat. So it's. So this time it's actually gonna play four times. So it played three times before, but it's gonna be four times now. 
and then it actually plays for a fifth time. I'm gonna count that fifth time as a separate time because there's this little flourish at the end. It's kind of a transition flourish uh, for a transition into the My Children Were Raised section. Okay, My Children Were Raised. Your right hand is only gonna be playing two chords. It's these two chords, D flat, F, A flat, and then D flat, G flat, B flat. And they're actually gonna be played as broken chords, but it's gonna alternate, so it's one. Just like that. I'm gonna, you know, I'll show you the left hand in just a moment, but the right hand is so simple, it just makes more sense to just do it hand by hand in terms of showing you what's going on here. The left hand is a little bit more complicated, although not by that much. It's just really getting this sequence down. Uh, you're gonna play A flat, D flat, E flat, F, G flat, A flat, and then you're gonna go back down, but you're gonna stop at the E flat. So when you get back down here, the cycle basically starts again from the top, which is this bottom A flat. So it starts like this, A flat, and then this is the first chord. And remember, it's alternating. So you'll see what I mean right here. That's the other thing I neglected to mention here, as you've noticed by now. Uh, when you're going up this scale, you're always going to be playing the note that you played before, before you strike the next note. goof there but that's okay um so yeah that's what that sequence is like so all together one more time from the top i'll show it Obviously, you want to slow down just like I did right there as you're approaching the end of this section. Okay, I have been in this town so long. First chord, in the right hand we have F, A flat, D flat, and we're going to play this D flat in the bass. Next chord, we have a regular F chord, basically. F, A, C, E in the right hand, left hand we're playing an F. So once again from the top. Next chord, in the bass we have a G flat, and in the right hand we have D flat, G flat, and B flat. So once again from the top. Next chord, in the left hand we have a G, right hand we're playing D flat, E, G, and B flat. So again from the top. Okay, next chord, it's this same chord again, we've seen this one before. Right hand we have D flat, F, and A flat, and we're playing an A flat in the bass. And then what's gonna happen, what's gonna happen is uh, we're going to alternate between this chord and this chord for a little bit. So I'm gonna show you exactly how many times and in what kind of rhythm. Ah, look. 
look what it is. It's our old pal, G sharp seven over D sharp in the right hand. And then we're gonna play this E, uh, e flat in the left hand with it. Okay, and then you're gonna play the chorus again. There is no difference in terms of how you're going to play the chorus compared to the first time around. It's the exact same pattern, exact same way. Everything is identical. Um, and then after the chorus finishes, we're going to play the next unique section, which is Bridge to Indians. Okay, Bridge to Indians. This is a very simple sequence. We're gonna start with this D flat. Next, we're going to play in the left hand, we have this B, and in the right hand, we have an F. Now, basically, everything that's going to happen after this until the very final chord, which is one exception, but basically, when we get here, we're going to then go and play every single note in both hands up until we get to these, these notes here. So, in the right hand, we have... Uh, B flat and the left hand we have G flat. So it's going to be like this. And this is the last chord. Basically mirror chords of one another in both hands. We have in the left hand C, E flat, A flat. And in the right hand we have the same thing but just mirrored E flat, A flat, C. That is Bridge to Indians. Okay, Prelude to Fade. First chord, I mean, we've played this chord so many times at this point. Uh, it is uh, the old D flat, F, A flat chord, played in conjunction with this D flat. So we're going to play this four times, and I'm gonna explain like the logic here. This is just gonna be the easiest way to think about it. It's not really four times. It's gonna play more than just that. Um, it's actually gonna play seven times, but just follow me here for a little bit. It's gonna be this, and then we're going to alternate the bass notes as we're playing the, left, the right hand chord between this D flat and the A flat. One, two, one, two. Okay, you're gonna play the chord in the right hand another three times, but the bass notes are gonna change. So just watch here and I'll explain what's going on in just a moment. Okay, so the fifth time that we play this, it's B flat, So in the downbeat between the fifth and the sixth time that you're playing the score in the right hand, you're gonna hit the A in the left hand, and then you're gonna land on the A flat. The A flat, the first time you play it, is gonna coincide with the, uh, the sixth time that you play this score in the right hand. So all together so far. Okay, and then you're gonna play it a seventh time, but the rhythm, like you're gonna hit the A flat, um, but there's kind of this bouncy rhythm that happens here. Yeah. Um, Let's just hear that in, in completion one more time through, and then we'll get to the next section of Prelude to Fade. Oh, look, G sharp seven over D sharp again in the right hand. I'm gonna play it with the E flat in the left hand. Okay, so here's where things are gonna start to get a little bizarre. Um, there's a lot of shifting of, of notes in the right hand that's gonna go on here, and a lot of shifting of notes in the left hand, although not that much compared to what, it's pretty much the same as before. Um, it's just the pattern is a little bit odder here. One, two, one, two, one, two. Okay. 
Um, gonna do my best to explain here. One, two, okay? And then what's gonna happen is right hand, you were playing this before, you're going to play instead for the next instance, uh, you're gonna play this upcoming chord twice. It's E flat, G flat, B flat. Um, and then the bass notes, the bass note is gonna shift to this B flat. Two, okay. And then after that, right hand. Same notes as before, but this bottom D flat, become, or sorry, E flat, excuse me, becomes a D flat. And the bass note you're gonna play with it stays the same as this B flat. So just like the previous time when we were playing this chord and we played the A, in the left hand in the downbeat, a similar thing's gonna happen here, pretty much. So left hand stuff remains the same once we get to this portion. So it's. And then right hand stuff we have. Plays twice this D flat F A flat chord. Okay, just like that. Okay, we're almost done. Um, then next chord, right hand we have B flat E flat G. Left hand we're gonna play this E flat. One two three. But the fourth time, when we get to four, we're gonna hold down the chord. And what's gonna happen is your left hand's gonna do a little bit of a bass rift, or bass riff, excuse me, as we're holding, as you're holding this down in your right hand. So it's G, A flat, A, B flat, B, C. It's a chromatic ascent up from this G to this C as you're holding down this chord in the right hand. Okay, almost at the end, guys. Then we're gonna do this kind of instrumental ascent and descent in your left and right hands. We're gonna start off with D flats. Okay. Okay, next, right hand, we're gonna play E flat. Left hand, we're playing a B. So once again, top of this particular part of Prelude to Fade. Next, left hand, B flat, right hand, F. Next, left hand, A, right hand, G flat. Then both your left and right hand are going to play A flats, again from the top. Next, we have a G in the left hand and a B flat in the right hand. And then finally, we have in the left hand, G flat, and in the right hand, we have a C. So once again, for the top, we have so far, Hold 
get on that C in the right hand, but let go of the G flat and just press the A flat instead. So once again. And then the ending. Okay, ending. This is just how we ended G. Right hand, we're gonna hold down this chord throughout. This chord is F, A flat, D flat. With it, we're gonna press this D flat, but as we're holding down the chord in the right hand, we're gonna go on our uh, Heroes and Villains riff here. A flat, and back to the D flat. F, A flat, B, D flat, B, A flat, G, A flat. And that is how the song ends. Alrighty, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful and I will have more tutorials very, very soon for you. If you are interested in Beach Boys piano tutorials in accompaniment style, please feel free to subscribe and like. I also have plenty of other Beach Boys content as well. Thank you so much and smile on. Peace.